This is Duke University. Poverty has gotten worse and hunger has gotten worse. So what we know from tracking the, the, our progress in terms of achieving the Millennium Development Goals is that for hunger, and I apologize uh, for the black, doesn't seem to come up so well, in 1990, 20% of the world's population was deemed to have this first indicator, insufficient food. It was roughly 842 million individuals, most of these people living in the developing world. We were doing okay, but not getting too much better. Uh, and then in 2007, the number really did shoot up. And this was actually even before food prices got really high. Uh, we are now at you know halfway mark. We have till 2015 to have it from 20%. We're just at 17%. So unless something really drastically gets done in terms of addressing this, we have a long way to go to meet the target of having by 2015. <laughs> the International Food Policy Research Institute, or IFPRI, uh, just released a report on what they call the Global Hunger Index. What is this Global Index? It's a composite index. It evenly weights, God forbid, evenly weights in an index three things for each population. The first is the percent of people who are calorie deficient. So it was that first statistic that I talked about. The second is the percent of children under five who are underweight. It was that second statistic that I was talking about. And then the third, which is really, I think, relevant for the global health, bringing it all together in a global health perspective, is the mortality rate in children under five years of age. And I think in order to be a good performing country over here, you've had to have tackled all three of the issues, and that's just speculation on my part, in order to get yourself uh, to have made a measurable improvement. I know in Vietnam, for example, they've done all three. They've, you know, they're more, they're, I don't know what their under five mortality rate, but their infant mortality rate is astonishingly low at around 17 per thousand. They've managed to reduce underweight there dramatically. I think food production has probably gone up. Um, we actually uh, funded, uh, the Gates Foundation helped to fund uh, a recent series that was published by the Lancet Medical Journal, which I'm sure you've all heard of, and it's called, we call it the Lancet Series on Maternal and Child Undernutrition. But what were some of the really top line um, messages from this Lancet series? Which, first and foremost was an estimate that every year there's about three and a half million child deaths that are uh, due directly or indirectly to problems of undernutrition. So right now we think that every year there's about 9.7 to 10 million deaths. This is roughly a third of all child deaths have nutrition as either an underlying or direct cause. And for those of you who know about the global burden of disease, um, this is actually not number one. Bigger than HIV, bigger than chronic diseases, bigger than malaria and TB and all. 11% of the global burden of disease is attributed to a one or another form of undernutrition. So I just wanted to turn to uh, my few minutes to talk about what is the Gates Foundation. So here's our mission. I'm sure if you um, listen to the National Public Radio, you can hear this <laughs> a lot. I hear it the most uh, all the time when I listen to the radio, and it's really to you know all lies the. the our, our vision is that all lives have equal value, and our mission in the Global Health Program is to ensure that life-saving advances in health are developed and shared with those who need them most. So we very much have been focused historically and continue to be focused on the de development, discovering development of new interventions, of interventions to bring health um, to, to those who need them most. It's an equity-driven approach. Um, our Global Health Program is is driven by this uh, global burden of disease and the disease priorities. We focus on infectious diseases, and there's all the big ones, as you um, probably know, HIV, malaria, TB, diarrhea, pneumonia, and various vaccine-preventable diseases. Second are, <laughs> is nutrition, and this is a remarkable thing because we are up there with the infectious diseases as being a priority because of the global burden of disease, as I mentioned before, and because um, uh, it is deemed to be an under-resourced under, under and under-focused area. This uh, slide summarizes our strategic framework. So what is the strategy and what does it look like? We go out, we review the landscape, we uh, identify the research areas, the research gaps. We talk to a lot of people and say, what, are, what, what should we, the Gates Foundation, be focusing on? 
So we have broad long-term goals that rela res uh, relate to reducing key micronutrient deficiencies in the developing world by 70% and then reducing the DALI's loss to undernutrition. It's, it's officially underway in children under 24 months. We have four strategies, or uh, four initiatives under this to reach these two, uh, two goals. One is a science and discovery and research initiative. Uh, a second is reducing micronutrient deficiencies through population-based interventions. And these are things like fortification, which I mentioned before, but also biofortification, which I know some people have been interested in here. A third one is looking at uh, reducing undernutrition from conception through 24 months. It's looking at targeted op interventions, things that would be really focused either through health services or other programs to reaching pregnant women and young children. And then our initiative four is really, okay, well, it's great to develop all these things, but how do you assure that they're actually put into place and that countries have the capacity and the ability to actually implement them? And so it's more or less a cross-cutting initiative that looks at how do we get consensus, how do we change the landscape about this poorly uh, <laughs> under, underfunded and neglected issue. Produced by Duke University, online at duke.edu.